This is Henry, and this is me, Keith. And today we're calling cabs and Ubers until we find someone who isn't native to the U.S. to tell us about their life and take us to the restaurant in L.A. that reminds them the most of home. We start with Uber, and while we wait, we ask our sound guy, Chris, a very important question. Who do you like better, me or Keith? Uh... The Uber arrives and we load in. Where are you from, Arkham? I'm from New York. From Iran? While we head to Echo Park, we pitch him our idea. He's interested and has a great story, but doesn't have time this afternoon to be in the video. So we part ways. It was great talking to you, man. He was sneaking across borders to get to America, essentially? Yeah, and like the food he was describing, I was like, fuck, just come on, agree to it. We call a cab using the app Curb. This app is terrible. We take a moment to appreciate the beauty of Echo Park, and we get in the next cab. This cabbie is literally the most crotchety old man to ever drive a car. He takes us to Chinatown and we get out as quickly as possible. We decide to stretch our legs before calling another Uber. During our walk, Henry finds a truck filled with grapes and immediately gets a grape seed stuck in his front teeth. We call another Uber. We get in and meet Thomas, who thinks we're making a student film. Thomas does not fit our specifications, but he was awesome all the same. We continue toward downtown and we pass a building that sells ink, copies, storage, and waffles. We get out, stretch our legs again, and then we foolishly entered an intersection without enough time to cross. Running across the street. We're getting very hungry and a little bit crazy. I'm about to call an Uber. He's in a Honda Odyssey. An odyssey is a good sort of metaphor for what we're doing here. The Uber arrives and we hop in, hoping this is the one. Where are you from, Iran? Uh, I was born and raised in Montenegro. It used to be Yugoslavia. He seems awesome, so we ask if he wants to be a part of our video. Absolutely, I would love it. Well, how come you came to America? Huh, that's a really long story, but I'll make it short. I came with my wife. You know, I just got married in 1987. And we came, came here for a honeymoon. And then we decided to stay for another couple months. But then um, my wife was pregnant. And you know, we decided to stay a little longer because the situation over there was really getting worse. Montenegro was part of Yugoslavia. As you know, the war started in Slovenia, then Croatia, small Bosnia, and then the whole region were fighting for almost 10 years. Right. And you know, when you have war over there, you don't have really desire to go back, especially with a little kid. Right. So that's how I decided to stay and finally, you know, we got citizenship. The more we talked with him, the more we loved Milan. So to see if he's a true Angelino, I ask him one more important question. What's his favorite fast food? No, I love In-N-Out. Perfect. We arrive at Aroma Cafe, where Henry, Chris, and I will eat Balkan food for the first time. Henry and Milan proceed to order way too much food, and our waitress kindly acts like it's normal. First, we have kefir, a milk and yogurt drink. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Uh, it's really interesting. It's not sweet at all, which mm -hmm. I really like. It just tastes like wholesome. What do you think of it, Chris? <laughs> it's really tart, but I really like it. I prefer normal milk. Kefir is normally paired with burek, a savory pastry. It's like the um, smanakovita kind of. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Very, very similar to Greek. I love how warm it is. It's very simple, but very delicious. Next up, sarma, which is smoked ground lamb with rice wrapped in cabbage and grape leaves. Wow. We don't have anything. Like the meat tastes like really, it's sort of like a fatty taste in the meat. So much flavor. It tastes like I'm coming home for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah, get that. I can't get enough of this. You don't find many uh, dishes like this in other countries. No. This is no. typical Yugoslavian or Balkan food. Okay. A little bit of uh, vegetables and then meat and a bread. Bread is really common with everything. At one point in our feasting, Milan has to go take a call while we continue to eat so much food. Whoa. I know she said it was lamb, but it tastes like bacon. I like it with this bread, because the bread's made here. It's like the kind of bread I feel bad making a sandwich with too, because the bread itself is like so delicious on its own. This was just a plate of meat. A plate of meat on a bed of onions. Yeah. Like pretty smoky, which is really like, I guess I, I would never, I had never even thought that the Balkans had their own cuisine, which is super ignorant of me. It's like smoky, but then the, the taste is a lot like a gyro meat. Milan comes back only to let us know that he needs to get to a meeting downtown, so we say our goodbyes. And then we continue to demolish all the food we ordered, as well as Turkish coffee with a piece of Turkish delight, a sugar-soaked and baklava stuffed apple, this sweet cake-like pastry, and baklava. 
Oh man. Is it hot or no, delicious? No, it's so good. What the fuck is happening? This is candy. Right now I feel like I could fight like seven donkeys at yeah. once. It was time to go. We thanked our server and the owner of Aroma Cafe and headed into our last Uber home. The day was a success, and we'd like to thank Milan one more time. He helped us experience food that was foreign to us after he spent 30 years raising a family in a culture foreign to him. Every driver has a story, and today, we got to experience one. Can I say like that? Uh, Milan is like the coolest fucking dude I've ever met. He's so cool. He just wants, he just like wants to talk about food, which is what I want to talk about yeah. all the time. It's amazing.